Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. Today we're going to be talking about the soft modification tool. The soft modification tool can be found here in our toolbox right there above the show manipulator tool. If you click it, uh, nothing will happen yet, but this is our soft modification tool. If we double click this, these are our soft modification settings. We have a fall off radius and a curve and lots of little check boxes here we can look at. The soft modification tool is actually very similar to the soft modification deformer here that you can find under the animation menu set, create deformers, soft modification. If you go into its options, you'll see it is identical. So the soft modification deformer and the soft modification tool are essentially the same tool. So what does this do? First, let me close this. We go to create polygon primitives. Plane. Just kind of drag out a plane, press the 5 key to go to shaded view, and I'll hide the grid with this little button. I'm going to increase my plane's subdivisions in the width and height, middle clicking and dragging like this with, the, the, with those channel attributes selected. We'll go up to like 30 or so. So with the object selected, or with a component selected, you can choose the soft modification tool. So let's do the entire object first. We're just going to select the whole object and click on our soft modification tool like this. So you see this shows up and this shows us an area of influence that the soft modification tool has on the object. And by default, since we selected the whole object, it goes for the center point of the plane. It gives us this little S icon or handle that we can select and grab like so. And as I pull up on this handle, you can see the effect it has. It's like a little magnet, and all the vertices that are influenced by that magnet are being pulled by it. Like so. And you can adjust, move this around and adjust it like this. But you'll see it's, it's constrained to that, center, that central area of influence that we started with. There are ways, of course, to edit this. But before we get into all that, let's look at our settings. So I'm just going to pull this up. Now, keep in mind that once I've applied the soft modification tool, anything I do in the settings will not actually affect my uh, current version of the soft modification deformer that we have applied. In order to look at the attributes of the one that we have, hit Control A to open the attribute editor. Move this down. And you'll see here we have our soft modification tab up here, soft mod 1 we can open our soft modification attributes here and we have fall off attributes and fall off curve here those same settings so first let's look at fall off curve and this is our default curve it gives us which gives us the shape that we're resulting in here if we choose this little arrow button on the right click this it makes the fall off curve much larger and we can work with it a little bit easier so as we click and move these buttons you can see the effect that adjusting this curve has on the resulting surface. You, you can click on these lines and add points and really adjust how the shape looks. I'm going to do something like this for example. Very interesting look. And again we, we can move these things like this and it still maintains that uh, connection. To get rid of one of these lines, I have these little X's down here below the box. So I can click this X to delete those points, like so. So yeah, it's pretty flexible on how you want this thing to be shaped. Let's go back to our default. So each point has associated with it a value, a position, and as well as an interpolation. Interpolation has several options here. We have none, linear, smooth, and spline. And these are on a per point basis. So whatever I do to this point, if I make this one a linear interpolation point, this one up here though is still smooth. So if I want to make it linear as well, now you see we have a straight line, a straight linear line between these two points because they're both linear. And we get this effect. 
So if I change it back to smooth for this point and select this point and change it to smooth, it goes back to a nice curve. Let's change this top one to none. You'll see immediately the result. It just goes straight across and kind of ignores this point until it gets to it in the selected position. So if we can move it kind of in the center here, we get this stair stepping effect. And the only reason why it's not straight up and down is because my little handle is not central. And that's with both, or at least this first one being a none interpolation. If I make this one also none, it doesn't really change much. But you can add more points in here and get different results. That can be fun to play with. So we add this point here in the middle. If we change it to smooth, you'll see we have a none all the way till we get to this point. Now it's smooth to that point. So uh, I think that kind of explains it for the most part. You can adjust, you can play with these shapes and get different uh, results based on the interpolation of each point to the other based on how their individual interpolations are set. So this one's up here is set to none. This one's set to smooth, and this one's set to none as well. We can change this one to spline, and then this next one is also spline, and we make it linear, and change this one to linear to get that straight line, like so. And then if we close this box, you can see down here that all our changes have been saved. And right here we have the same options. We have to select the position, select the value, and interpolation. And you can click these little circles, and you'll see how those values and interpolations change the way we set them in the larger view. So I'm actually going to delete all this stuff and put it back to our original state where this first one is smooth and this last one is also smooth. Close that like so. That's the fall off curve. Let's go to fall off in X, fall off in Z, fall off in Y. We have three, three check boxes here. If we turn off one of these, you'll notice that in the effect, it you're turning off the fall off in that axis direction. So fall off in X, turn it off. You see now there's no fall off in the X axis, so it just continues throughout the entire object in the X axis. If we rotate our deformer, you can see the effect we get with this. So we check that back on, we get we go back to our original kind of hill shape. Fall off in Z, same thing. Fall off in Y is a little different since we have this uh, deformer being pulled up in Y, it will technically turn the deformer off because now there's no fall off in Y, so it's just not doing anything in the Y axis. But we need it to, so we'll bring it back. And this is the show manipulator tool I'm using to highlight the uh, fall off colors that we see here. These colors are based on intensity, so the yellow color is most intense of, of pull, there's no fall off, and black is where there's a high amount of fall off. And of course red's in the middle. That kind of shows you, gives you an idea of how much fall off is happening at a certain point on the surface. Okay, let's go back up to fall off attributes. We have fall off center, X, Y, and Z values, then a fall off radius slider, and then fall off mode. Right now the mode is volume, which is the default option. So with a volume fall off, you essentially have a sphere of influence that is containing the influence of the deformer. If I were to show manipulator button here, and I, you see this little blue button at the bottom of this, if I click it, it changes to show my fall off radius handle. So by clicking and drag on this red circle, you see I can increase the fall off radius and you can notice the slider moving up and down as I adjust this. And this is with a volume fall off mode so you can imagine a sphere of influence around here and while I have this selected I can actually move the fall off center which you can see the XYZ values here change as I move this. So I'm adjusting the fall off center, which is changing where the where the soft modification is starting from on the surface. Like so. And then the handle up here adjusts which direction the fall off, which direction the soft modification is being pulled toward. 
can click this little circle to go back and forth between adjusting the handle position and adjusting the fall off center position. Just double click back on our soft modification tool and look at some of the other settings that we have here. You can see here we have our fall off radius and fall off curve, our fall off mode, which right now we've only talked about volume. There's also surface, which we'll get to. Then you can see there's color feedback. If we turn this on and off, it turns off that gradient color that shows us how strong the modification is being pulled on certain as certain parts of the geometry. So now let's kind of get rid of our soft modification deformer that we have so far. I'm going to go into the outliner here. I'll just kind of select this and delete it. So now our plane is back to normal. So now let's select some vertices before we apply the soft modification. Let's go through here and just kind of select some random vertices like this. And now if we click on soft modification tool, the, the gradient color that shows us the area of influence of the soft modification tool is only showing up around those vertices that we had selected. I can pull this up here and you can click on the soft mod and increase the fall off radius as high as you want and you'll see that only those vertices that we had selected are being pulled up by the soft modification tool. So let's look at fall off around selection and fall off masking. Right now fall off masking is turned on. If we turn it off, so by turning off the fall off masking it will affect the entire object regardless of what vertices we had selected when we applied the modification tool. Let's turn it back on and you see now our selection is affected and the non-selected vertices are not. But let's say you want to kind of adjust the vertices that were selected by the deformer. So select the soft modification handle, we'll go to edit deformers, edit membership tool. You can see again we have all our vertices highlighted that are affected by the deformer in yellow and the pink ones are not. We do have a video going over the edit membership tool in more detail. Feel free to click over here and check that out. But essentially if you hold down the shift key, click and drag around some vertices, you can add them to the selection. Hold control and left click and drag. You can remove them from the selection. So shift to add, control to subtract. And that's with the edit membership tool after applying any deformer, but in this case soft modification. All right, let's go back here. So fall off around selection. Let's uh, go back to our show manipulator tool just so we can see the color. It kind of helps out to uh, differentiate it from the gray background of the plane. So fall off around selection right now is turned off. Because right now we're using a fall off uh, radius and fall off center. And we click this little blue circle, we have this that we're using as kind of the source of our fall off. But if you instead say fall off around selection, let's do that now. Click on. You see instead now it just uses your select it uses your selection as the fall off. Now let's turn fall off masking off. You can see we kind of get this effect. Now let's decrease our fall off radius and let's move this up so it's a bit easier to see. So now you can see we can, we can adjust how much fall off from the selection we get with the fall off radius and that's using fall off masking off and fall off around selection on. We turn fall off around selection back off again we get back to our circular volume that we're uh, falling off around and fall off masking and turn back on then it masks it based on the selection that we had instead of not like so. So it's kind of a combination between off and on or on and off between those two settings to get different results. So turn that back on, turn this back off and we get this kind of effect. So let's go back to create deformers, soft modification Let's look at some of our options here. So fall off mode we've been doing so far is volume. The other option is surface. And what that does is instead of using that circular volume, it will instead use a, have a fall off radius based on the, the contours of the surface that we're 
using. And I think this would be easier to see probably in a different shaped object. So let's delete all this. We'll create a polygon torus. Let's do something like this, which has an interesting shape to it. And now I'll apply a soft modification. You can see I got this here. I'm just going to adjust my fall off center so it's more to one side of the torus and not just in the center of it and increase my fall off radius like so. So you can see it's going to the other side of the torus. Let's click this button again. So we change this from volume to surface. You can see how it doesn't affect nearly as much of the donut shape as it does with a volume turned on. Because, because it takes longer to get around the donut than it does to just go straight across, then the effect becomes shortened based on our fall off radius that we have. If you look back at our show manipulator tool, click on this blue button. So this is our radius. And when you're using a fall off mode of volume, you're using the entire radius, no matter how far away it is around the donut, in this case. But if we change it to surface, my volume hasn't changed, but because the surface has this unusual shape to it, it takes longer based on this fall off radius uh, amount to get around the torus, so it gets shortened. If I increase my fall off radius, you can see it, it will continue to wrap around the torus until it meets at the other side. And that's with a surface fall off mode. If you go back to volume, it'll go back to its circular shape. So the other checkboxes we have here are preserve history, mask unselected, and around selection. These two are essentially the same as fall off around selection and fall off masking. Those are those two checkboxes and those turn these on or off. So preserve history, if this is on, it'll preserve the history of our soft modification nodes for later use, if you wished. Uh, if you are modeling with this, if, it's, if you're using this as a mod modeling tool, it can be handy or it might be useful to turn it off. So it just depends on your situation. If hit reset, you see it's off by default. So yeah, this is a soft modification tool, again, found here. It's very similar to the soft selection commands you can find in like the move tool. If we double click on the move tool and scroll down here, we have soft selection. So if we were to select some vertices and turn this on, you see we have this soft selection effect, very much like the soft modification tool. We have the fall off radius and volume. We have a couple other options besides just volume and surface. Let me reset this. And we have the fall off curve, interpolation, also have some curve presets and we can change the color of the fall off as well if you wished. So a couple other settings in there we might go over in a uh, future video but for now I think that kinda is the gist of the soft modification tool. I hope you learned a little bit about this tool. Maybe you'll find it useful in the future. Again thanks for watching. If you have any requests for future videos please let me know. I'll talk to you later.